Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. G. Marshall, and I carry a feeble, flickering lamp that may, for a brief moment, illuminate the darkness that surrounds us all. Right you are, if you think you are, said the playwright, and for all practical purposes, it happens to be true. After all, in so many cases, hasn't right been established by the strongest arm or the loudest voice or uh, perhaps by the man who manages to live the longest? Now, where are we headed for, Gus? Just driving north. I'd like you to meet this girl. Well, I'm not really interested in meeting anyone right now. You should meet her before the wedding. Well, to whose wedding? Yours and hers. <laughs> But I'm not going to marry anyone. Oh, yes, you are. This afternoon. Hey, put the... hey, What is this? A, a, a shotgun wedding? I wouldn't call this a shotgun. More of a little twenty-two caliber pistol. But it can do the job. Gus, are, are you crazy? Don't fight me, Charlie. I promise you. You're about to marry the girl of your dreams. <laughs> mystery drama Shotgun Wedding was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Jack Grimes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The grass is always greener, they say, in the yard that isn't yours. A man will yearn for the security and comfort of a wife and a home. And uh, then, of course, later, he will long for the joys and freedom of the single state. But this is our lot, and we must learn somehow to live with it. Well, it's the coffee break down at the machine shop. So I says to her, hey, gorgeous, what time you get off? She says to me, I never go out with married men. And so I says to her, that makes two of us. I never go out with married men, neither. <laughs> hey, hey, where are you going, Charlie? Uh, why, I want to change the setting on my leg. Oh, you don't want to hear how I made out with his dame? Oh, look at him blush. <laughs> well, I, I, I remember, I, I, I need a new chuck. Guys, you know what I think? I think Charlie here... Now, now cut it out, will you, Barney? Let him alone, Barney. Oh, now, gosh, we're only trying to make a man out of the kid. A man, an animal like yourself. Hey, gosh, watch out what you're saying. A man. Does a man defile his marriage? Does a man take the money that should feed his children and throw it away on prostitutes? Okay, Gus, you asked for it. Hey, now, Why, you... Look, you guys, come... All right, up. Get up, you pig. You haven't had anything yet. Up. Don't hit him again, Gus. Don't. You might kill him. Just a second. Hi, Charlie. What? Gus. How did you I, know? I, I went to the personnel office. I asked where you lived. They told me. <laughs> you could have asked me. Yeah. Uh, well, come in. Uh, come in. Thank you. Uh, as you can see, the uh, place isn't much. <laughs> That's right, it isn't. What have you got, just the one room? Uh, yeah. Uh, that door's to a little kitchenette, and uh, the other one's the bathroom. And so you live out your life in one little room where you eat and sleep. I've been watching you for a long time, Charlie. You have? Why? How old are you? Well, 27. <laughs> 27. And already a top machinist. Why have you been watching me? Because you're different. 
<laughs> In what way? You don't drink. You don't smoke. You don't gamble. Why not, Charlie? Why, I, I guess I just don't feel the urge or, or the need. Uh, maybe I'm just not interested. You don't tell jokes about girls, either. And you feel very uncomfortable when other men do. Why? Well, I guess I have my own ideas about women. Hey, what is this? What ideas do you have about women? And hey, now, look, now, look, look here, Gus. Maybe we were, you know, worked together in the same shop, but I, I don't even know you. Tell me about your ideas. Well, I happen to think you shouldn't go out with a girl and, unless you respect her. I see. Well, you, you... Take a guy like Barney. What about Barney? Well, he's... He's just a big blowhard. None of that stuff he tells is true. You you didn't have to hit him. He hit me first. He, he was just protecting this little world of his own where he's the, the big make-out king. It's, it, it, it's all in his mind. Yeah, I suppose you may be right. All of us have little private worlds of our very own. What's yours? Mine? <sighs> I don't know. Don't you dream of something, Charlie? No. You can tell me. Why should I tell you? Look, look what, what did you come here for? Would you like to meet a girl? What? No, I shouldn't have just said that as if this were just an ordinary girl, Charlie. Would you like to meet the girl of your dreams? Gus, what, 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 what are you talking about? You didn't answer. Would you like to meet the girl of your dreams? How do you know I, I know the kind of man you are. I know the kind of girl you want. I, I think you're crazy. And she's been waiting for you. Don't you think it's just as hard for her? Gus, are you, are you trying to fix me up with some girl? What kind of language is that to use, Charlie? Uh, are you... You know, there's something about a guy close to 30 who isn't married. It's like a, a red flag to a bull. He bothers everybody. That they, they all try to pair him off. His, his mother, his sisters, his cousins, his landlady, even strangers. This girl, she's beautiful. Tall, slender, long blonde hair which falls across her slim, graceful shoulders. Sparkling blue eyes. What's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. Well, how come nobody's grabbed her by this time? Charlie, this isn't the kind of language I ever thought I would hear from you. Just answer the question. What's wrong with her? She's kind, sweet, generous, loving, and intelligent. How come she's waiting for me? Because only a man like you could appreciate her. Well, who... <laughs> who is she? My daughter. Your... My only child... I want to make sure she marries the right man. And I know you two were meant for each other. I, uh, I, I did, didn't, didn't know you had a daughter. I, I didn't even know you were married. Yeah, my wife is dead. Elaine. She's all I have left in the world. Gus, how do you, you know we, uh, we, we could get along? This was meant to be. Look, uh, thanks for telling me about her, but one of these days I'll, I'll, I'll call her up maybe and, and, and make a date. No, no, you don't understand. It isn't necessary for you to go through all these, these motions. I've told her all about you. She's willing. She's what? And why not? Now that I've told you all about her, aren't you willing? Wait a second. For what? Is life so long? Is there so much time that you can waste even a single solitary precious minute? Regardless of what you say, in your heart, you know you're willing. I don't know any such thing. Deep in your heart, you know you're in love with Elaine. Come with me. We got a long ride. Where? Just above Slaterville. That's where Elaine lives. Yeah, but... Cause... Tomorrow is Saturday. We have no work. Yep. We'll spend the weekend. I, I, I planned... What had you planned? Nothing that should stand in the way of meeting the girl of your dreams. Come on, my car's outside. I don't know how it happened. Gus Verko? I hardly knew him. Just a big, quiet guy at the shop. 
but I didn't know anyone at the shop very well as far as that went. Uh, you can probably tell by now that I'm a guy who likes to keep to himself. I uh, don't have many friends. Sure, this I... I don't have any friends. But before I knew what he was doing, he had an overnight bag packed for me, and he had hustled me downstairs and into his car, and we were off. Off on a 150-mile drive. What was I doing here? You like music? Gus, I, uh, I've got to talk to you. Sure, it's a two-and-a-half, three-hour drive. Plenty of time to talk. I, I, I want you to turn this car around and take me back. Charlie, how can you say that? I've been thinking. You're... You're a very anxious father. Oh, I admit that. Wait. You'll have a daughter of your own. You'll see how anxious you'll be. And you're worried she won't get married. That's right. And so you decided to take matters into your own hands. That's what I've been telling you. Something's wrong with your daughter, Gus, because if there wasn't, you wouldn't have to do a thing like this. What is it, Gus? Is... Is she homely? I told you, she's beautiful. This isn't the way to help her, Gus. Now, look, what, what I want you to do is turn the car around and, and, and take me home. Why? Or else stop the car and I'll, I'll get back by myself. Why? Because I want to, that's why. I don't have to explain any reasons. Now stop the car. Didn't you hear me? I heard you. Then stop. You're coming with me. Look, Gus, you can't force Shut me up. to... No, I, I, I'm doing this for your own good. The next time we stop for gas or if we pass a cop, it's I'm going to... It's such pretty music. Why don't you just shut your mouth and listen? Well, then and there, I decided I had better shut my mouth. He was big and he was tough. I'd seen him almost kill Barney back at the shop. He seemed nice enough, pleasant enough when he was happy. But make him mad... Well, I'd, I'd play along with it. What, what else could I do? But I, I, I couldn't believe it was happening to me. And when he spoke again, I got cold chills. Next Sunday's her birthday. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, you uh, said next Sunday's her birthday. You know, I was thinking it would be a good day to get married. Married? Birthday, wedding day. Nice timing. A double celebration. And besides, it's economical. You only have to buy one present. I never said I was going to marry your daughter. You don't have to say it. Why should you object? I, I, I can't believe it. a thing like this is happening to me. Gus, let me straighten you out, huh? You, you can strong arm me into your car and drag me to the What's this to about strong arm? There's absolutely no way in this world you can force me to stand up there with her at an altar and make me say, I do. Why are you so excited, so nervous? What am I doing? I'm only going to make you the happiest man in the world. Is this how you show your appreciation? All I'm saying is I'm going to decide who I marry. Of course. You and you alone are the only one who has a right to make that decision. Then how can you tell me the wedding is set? Because you've already decided. Uh, you know you want to marry her. You've been dreaming about a girl like her your whole life. And now you're about to meet her. You mean you want to back out? What kind of nut are you? What? What kind of nut am I? Look, the wedding is set, and, and let's not have any more foolish talk about it. Uh, oh, uh, okay, oh, okay, guess, whatever you say. <sighs> All right, wise guy. You're going to learn a lesson right now. A lesson? Get that tone out of your voice. You know what I mean? The tone that says, I better humor this maniac. Because I'm not a maniac. You understand? Uh, uh, sure, yeah, I, I understand. There are people in this world who can see what other people can't. You follow this? Sure, sure. It's like an inventor. He looks at a pile of wires and, and then springs. And he sees a machine. Understand? Sure. But I see you. And I see Elaine. And I see a wedding. And that's how it's going to be. Talk 
about shotgun weddings. Here we're about to have one where the fellow hasn't even met the girl. You must admit, it's been a sneaky kind of build-up. First, it was, how would you like to meet a girl? And before Charlie knew what was happening, it has developed to the point where he will have to marry her. Well, we haven't met Elaine either. We will in just a few moments when I return with Act Two. The world seems filled with people who always know what's best for you. They're quite vocal in prescribing the best religion, the best politics, the best books, the best foods. But our hero, Charlie Demarest, seems to be in the power of someone who knows the best bride for him. Not only knows, but has already set a wedding date. When you're in the hands of a madman, then what other word can I use to describe him? You better just go along with him. Why make things worse? So the thing to do is play it by ear and escape at the first opportunity. Well, a couple of miles before Slaterville, we uh, got off the turnpike. We uh, took a country road, and then we made a few more twists and turns, and it's open country. Wild, but very, very pretty. And suddenly, we're there. The house is... Oh, I, I didn't expect it to be so beautiful. It, it's one of those... Colonials, white with blue shutters, and there's a smooth green lawn. There are beds of brilliant flowers. A sign on the fence reads, Verco. You're home, Charlie. Next week, that sign will say, Demarest. Yeah, but, but Gus... My wedding present uh... to you and Elaine. Look at the place. Isn't it great? Well? Uh, sure, sure. Elaine does it. She loves working in the garden. She's got what they call a green thumb. And the inside's the same way. Oh, what a housekeeper. Everything spick and span. And cook. Charlie, you can't dream how lucky you are. Being beautiful's one thing. But a woman also has to know how to take care of things. You'll thank me for the rest of your life. Gus, aren't you taking a chance? What kind of chance? Well, you really don't know anything about me. I know everything. Well, how do you know who I am? Shouldn't you be sure of me? You have only one fault. You talk too much. Listen. Yeah. I bought it for her when she was 16. She loves it so much. Elaine. Elaine, we're here. Hello, Father. He said she was beautiful. But that word couldn't even hope to describe her. I'm not a poet. I'm a machinist. So how can I tell you? It, it was like a shock, an electric shock. Except it was wonderful. She smiled. And everything inside me came awake. I felt as if I'd never lived before. And she wanted me... Yes, I could see it in her eyes. It, it was love. Love at first sight. I, I know it's crazy, but isn't that what love really is? Oh, the music has stopped again. Maybe Charlie can fix it. Can you, Charlie? He can fix anything. Well, I'll... He's I'll... very modest. Here, can you tell me what's wrong with it? I, well, I'll try. Say, uh, why don't you kids get to know each other? I'll, uh... I'll check out the dinner in the kitchen. It's all ready to serve, Daddy. Okay, so I'll serve it. I, uh, yeah, I, I think I see the problem. Yes? It's the spring. You see, it, it, it loses its resilience. What I'll do to fix it is uh, make another spring. We have wire at the shop that's made of a new type alloy. You're everything Daddy said you were. And I'll come back and fix it. And I'm so happy I fell in love with you. Elaine, I love you. Would you like to go for a walk? Well, it, it, isn't your father expecting us to have dinner? Come on. We'll watch the sunset. She took me by the hand and we were out the door. The house was at the side of a hill. There was a broad valley below and a river. 
And the glow of the setting sun turned the water to a brilliant gold, and it was a moment of absolute stillness. No sound of bird or crickets, no sigh of wind in the trees. Complete silence. We held each other very close. It was the moment. The one moment of all the millions of moments in a lifetime that can never be forgotten. And the whole weekend was filled with such moments, moments of discovery, moments of joy. We, we walked, we talked, or we sat together quietly. Will you marry me, Elaine? Yes. Elaine, when? Whenever you say. Now. I did want to marry in a church. Then let's get married next Sunday. Is that all right? Oh, yes, my darling. Well, well, what are you two up to, huh? Daddy, Charlie has asked me to marry him. Oh, has he? It's to be next Sunday. Well, it didn't take you too long to decide, did it, Charlie? <laughs> no, sir. You both made me very happy. And now, Charlie, you'll have to tear yourself away from her. Tomorrow's Monday, a working day, and it's getting late. Oh, that's right. Well, could you come back to the city with us, Elaine, and stay with your dad? Uh, no. No, I have so many things to do here. But you'll be all alone. I'll never be alone anymore, Charlie. And neither will you. Hey, we'll be back on Friday night. And what a weekend that's going to be. My whole life was different. I felt alive. I, I was aware of everything. The, the singing of birds, the, the perfume of flowers. You don't live un, until you're in love. And I was in love. Gus dropped me off at my place. See you at the shop in the morning. I went upstairs. I couldn't sleep. I, I, I was so happy. I, I, I couldn't get over my luck, my fantastic luck. Elaine... A girl like Elaine, and, and she was mine. Well, before I knew it, morning had come. Time to go to work. <laughs> but I couldn't concentrate. Hey. Hey, Charlie. She's turning, but she ain't cutting. <laughs> What's up, kid? Too much weekend? Yeah, well, I knew then and there it was no use trying. I, I, I just couldn't wait. I, I, I'd, I'd have to see Elaine now. So I asked the foreman. <laughs> Bill, uh... Something's the matter with me. Maybe I'd better go home. Oh, sure, everybody's entitled to a Monday morning hangover. Just don't make it a habit. On the way out, I stopped at the stock room and picked up some special wire for a spring. And then I got into my car and headed north. When I got to the sign that announced Slaterville, I turned off onto that country road. And then... Then I realized I was lost. The, the place couldn't be too far away, but I, I realized I, I didn't know which road to take. I, I, I pulled into a diner. I, I figured I'd call her. I looked in the phone book, but I couldn't find the name. Verco. Verco. There was no Verco. No Gus Verco. No Elaine Verco. Well, I... Maybe it was a different township. Operator 36. Uh, yeah, yes, operator. A, a telephone for Virco. V-I-R-K-O. Uh, it, it'd probably be under Gus or maybe August uh, or Elaine. Virco, I'll check it for you. Uh, th th thank you. Under V, as in Virginia, I-R-K-O. Uh-huh. I find nothing, sir. But, but they, they, they live up here. They have to be in the phone book. I'm sorry, sir. I, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Hey, Jerry, why don't you feed the box? Give us a little music around here. You're freeloader enough. Pop for something once in your life. Oh, well, it be, buddy. Uh, I'll have a, a cup of coffee. One coffee. Hey, uh, how's that coffee, bud? Cream? Uh, yes, yes, please. Uh, I'm uh, looking for somebody. That's the story of the world, ain't it? Who you after? The name's Virko. What? name did you say? Verco. Gus Verco. Gus Verco. Yeah, he, he lives there with his daughter, Elaine. His daughter, Elaine? Well, uh... I uh, think I went, went the wrong way when I got off the turnpike. I, I was there just this past weekend. 
Where'd you say you were this past weekend? With the Vercos, Gus and his daughter Elaine. As a matter of fact, Elaine and I are to be married next Sunday. Oh. Uh, uh, could you excuse me just a second? I, I gotta go in the kitchen. Something's burning. Hello, Sheriff. This is Harry at the diner. Yeah. No, no, I ain't being held up or anything like that. But I got a nut here. Well, he seems harmless, but he's a nut. Maybe he escaped from someplace. Leave me tell you what he told me. Are uh, you the uh, gentleman who's been asking how to get to the vehicle place? Well, yes, Sheriff, thank you. Man, maybe you can help me. No one else around here seems to be able to. Did you tell Harry here you'd spent this past weekend there? Yes. Hey, Sheriff, is, is something... Did you also say you were going to marry Elaine Virko next Sunday? Sheriff, what, what, what is all this? What's your name, mister? Where are you from? Hey, all I did was ask for directions. May I see your identification? What's the idea? May I? Look, am I supposed to have done something? All right, here's... It's my driver's license. Uh, Charles Demarest. Look, all I did was come in here and ask for directions. That's all. That's enough. I'm looking for the Verco place. I'm, I'm going to see Elaine Verco. We're going to be married Sunday. Now, why doesn't anybody want to tell me how to get there? When did you and Elaine decide to get married? Yesterday. Yesterday, when I was at the house. I guess most people would think I'm crazy. I, uh. I only met her Friday night, but... <laughs> Sheriff, how long does it take when both of you know it's right? Is that uh, your story? What do you mean, story? Now, 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 look, do you want to tell me how to get there? Well, I'll do better than that, son. I'll take you there myself. Well, you're going wrong, Sheriff. Well, how do you know? Oh, because I remember there were no houses along the way once you turned off. There, there was nothing but trees and fields. Is that so? No, this is wrong. Now I remember when Gus drove me up, we turned off on a road that read County 37. Oh, there's a sign marker coming up. Read it. County 37. But, but it can't be. Why not? There, there was nothing. Nothing. I remember the road took a sharp, sharp turn to the right. Yeah, well, that curve is coming up about 50 yards. See? And you go uphill and there's, there's the house. You should be able to see the house from here. Beautiful two-story colonial, white with blue trim, the big lawn in front, flower beds. Why, why are we stopping? We're here. Where? This is the Verco place. Sheriff, you're crazy. This, this, this overgrown... All you gotta do is just walk through the weeds and bushes, and you'll see it. What's left of it. But I was here last night. No, you weren't. Look, Sheriff, I'm not crazy. I ought to know where come I... Come on, come on. Take a little walk. I'll show you the house. What's left of it. Police burned to the ground ten years ago. What are you telling me? I was here last night. Verco. Gus. Uh, he was a nut. I found his daughter. Didn't think any man could be good enough for her. Sheriff, you have to believe me. Oh, you'll be all right, son. I'll, uh, I'll take you back to your car. Don't you believe me? Elaine was seeing this fella. He wasn't a bad guy, but uh, no man was good enough for Gus. He killed them both. He's got a terrible temper. And when he was finished, he uh, burned down the house. How? How? I was here last night. And we were here, too. Well, what did we say back when these proceedings began? Right you are if you think you are? Well, looking at it now... Everybody can't be right, can they? But you can be sure of being right if you just stay here till I return with Act Three in just a few moments. Well, here you are. 
you finally met the girl of your dreams. And you also find out you're the man of her dreams. Could things be more perfect? The wedding day is set. And now you discover that the girl of your dreams, whom you met last night, has been dead for ten years. Son, you give me a very peculiar story about being at a place last night that was burned down ten years ago. Gus, Gus Verko and I, we were here with her, with Elaine. Gus, after it happened, they put him into an asylum. Gus Verko, he, he's a machinist. I know that. He works with me at the shop at, at Gaylord and Terry in the city. Well, I guess he beat the rap. It happens. Guys are found criminally insane, then a couple of three years later, the doctors find a cure. I can't believe it. Look, here's what we're up against. The house is burned down. It's rubble. The girl is dead these ten years. But I was... Okay, okay, let's not argue. Do you want to see the court records and newspapers? I mean, uh, what does it take? I'm sorry, son. It's, it's okay. Well, I'll give you a lift back to the diner. You can pick up your car. Yeah. Say. What is it? This little thing here. Oh, it looks like a box. It's a music box. Listen. Well, I'll be. It plays. So? What about it? Well, according to you, it's been lying out here in the snow, the rain, and for ten years. How can it still play? All I know is what I hear. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, when I was here last night, this box was broken. It stopped. The spring. The spring didn't work anymore, and so I said I'd bring a new... Look, look, look. Look at what? At the work. See? The spring? The spring. Everything else is rusty, corroded, but... The spring, it's brand new. What are you trying to tell me? The spring, it still works. Which is why the box can still play. Listen. You see the spring? Not a speck of dust or rust. Well, maybe it's a kind of steel that doesn't rust. Yeah, well, it sure is. It's a special alloy. I made this spring myself. I put it here for Elaine. When? When? I came back here. I... I... Must have come back here. Yeah? When? T -t today. I'm, I'm, I'm back here now. Well, how could you fix the music box today? You couldn't even find the place. When you did, <laughs> here's what it looks like. Now, Charlie... But the spring, the steel spring... Charlie, do you want to wind up in a nut house? I, 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 I don't know what to think. <laughs> I didn't know what to think. I went back to his office. He, he insisted. He, he showed me the court record. August Verico did kill his daughter Elaine and her fiancé Walter Rhodes. August Verco did burn down the house. He was sentenced to the state institution for the criminally insane and... There was the story and the pictures in the paper. It isn't true. It isn't true, I insisted. But I, I was only whistling in the dark. There it was, the record, black on white. Charlie. Charlie, uh, are you all right? The, the, the foreman said you were sick. So I came here as soon as I got off work. Uh, how, how do you feel? You, you, you look pale. No, I'm, 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 I'm all right, Gus. No, no, you're not. Something's wrong. Tell me. Well? All right, I'll... I'll tell you straight out. I didn't go home today. I went up to Slaterville. Yeah? I, I, I couldn't wait a whole week before seeing Elaine again. I don't blame you. So when I got off the interstate, I... I forgot the way. I stopped at the diner. The Harry's diner? To ask the way, and he thought I was crazy. Why? Next thing I knew, the sheriff was there. Tom Carlsbad? Well, I, I think that's what it said on his name tag. Yeah? So? He... He said Elaine was dead. He said what? He said you killed her and her boyfriend ten years ago and burned down the house. Tom Carlsbad said that? He not only said it, he took me to the place and it was all in ruins. But you and I, 
We were there. Weren't we? Gus, I, I saw it. I saw the burned-out house, the, the, the overgrown weeds in the grounds. I, I went back to the sheriff's office. I, I saw the court records. I saw the old newspapers. You saw all this? Yes. But last night, what did you see? I saw... I saw... You saw Elaine, didn't you? Yes. How did I know the man in the diner was named Harry? Because there's that big sign on the turnpike exit. Harry's Diner. When you said the sheriff's name was Tom Carlsbad, why did I remember that name on his nameplate? Because you must have seen it someplace. Where? How would I know, but you must have seen it. Gus, I'm, I'm, I'm going crazy. All right, Charlie. Guys go through all kinds of nutty things just before they get married. I guess it's almost normal. Why don't we drive up there right now? See? Right here at the interstate exit, there's the sign for Harry's Diner. And now we turn left at the state road. It looks different. Different from what? From when I was here, to just before. It's exactly the way it looked last night. And now we turn right on County 37. There were... There were houses here. Look up ahead. What do you see? I saw the house. The beautiful white house with the blue trim. The rolling green lawn. The, the brilliant flowers. But even more wonderful, Elaine. Elaine standing at the door, blonde and lovely and... Elaine! Charlie, oh, Charlie, I'm so glad you came. I, I couldn't wait a week. I couldn't wait either. Daddy, why don't you sit down and rest, and Charlie and I'll prepare some drinks. And don't hurry on my account. Oh, Charlie, it never sounded better. Well, it's all in the spring. That's the heart of it. With the spring, it can run forever. You're wonderful, Charlie. Oh, just wonderful. I... I can't believe it. Believe what? This, this, the, the, the way we are right now, everything, I, I... I can't believe you love me. I do love you. Oh, good things never really happened to me before. Elaine... Charlie, don't. Don't what? We really shouldn't. I, uh, I only want to kiss you. I know, but... But, but what? Don't you want to? Of course I do, of course, but it's my father. Your father? He doesn't like it when a man touches me. What are you talking about? Your father brought me here. I know. I... I love you, Elaine. Do you love me? Yes. Yes, I do love you. Then we have nothing to be afraid of, nothing to worry about. Oh, hold me, Charlie. Closer. Oh, my darling. Dearest Charlie, love me. I'll spend my whole life loving you. I, I don't want to do anything else. Oh, don't let go of me. Never let go. Hey, what's oh. this? Oh. Uh, Daddy. What's what, Gus? Take your hands off her. Well, we're engaged, Gus. We'll be married next Sunday. Well, you, 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 you don't have to paw at her like that, do you? Well, I'm, I'm oh, not. Oh, Daddy, uh... please, don't be angry. And you shut up. Huh? Well, don't you talk to her like that. I'll talk to her any way I please. I see that look in your eyes. What look? That animal look. The same kind of look Barney and all the others have. I thought you were different. What do you mean by different? I thought you'd respect her. I respect her. Oh, no. Oh, go, please, Charlie, go. You heard what she said? Go. Elaine. When he gets like this, oh, please, run away from him, please. But, but, but we're in love. Love. Is this what you mean by love? To destroy this beautiful child? Oh, run, Charlie. He'll kill you. You're coming with me. Oh, no. You're not stealing my baby, not you. I'll kill you first. Oh, Daddy. Put away that gun. No. Daddy, no. Ah! Ah! Daddy. You killed him. You killed him. You killed my daddy. Well, I hate... I, I only was... Oh, you killed my daddy. <laughs> I was looking at something. Some printed letters. It, it was a name. 
Carlsbad. And now it became a name plate. And it was the sheriff. And he was looking down at me because I was lying on a bed in a room where everything was white. In the window, it had bars across it. How do you feel, son? I... Well, well, where am I? The hospital. Prison hospital. You got a superficial bullet wound in your arm. I guess you can plead self-defense. What? What what, what happened? You know what happened. He was crazy. He told you this phony story. You made him face the truth. You got into a fight. He had a gun. You managed to get it away from him. And you killed him. But I... I, 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 I was... Lucky she... someone heard the shots. I, I, I found you lying there with uh, that uh, thing in your hand. You you still won't let go of it. That, that, that music box. The, the music box. I fixed it. Listen. Sure. Don't you remember yesterday? I told you I fixed it. In addition to pleading self-defense, you can also claim you're crazy. Son, you won't serve a day in jail. But I... She was... They were... Yeah? I don't know. I just... Don't know. He doesn't know and we don't know. Because the basic truth is, who knows the heart and the mind of another human being? Who knows what the next one sees and feels and believes? We look far afield for mystery, and yet the greatest mystery of all is the person who is standing next to you. No mystery about me. I'll be back very shortly. girl of your dreams or the man of your dreams you meet in your dreams you love in your dreams but what are dreams and who are the dreamers when are we awake and when are we dreaming well let us worry about all such things you just tune in for the sheer enjoyment of it seven times each week our cast included Jack Grimes, Patricia Elliott, Leon Janney, and William Griffiths. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.